Okay, so this entire week I've actually been trying to shoot a like iPad video, talk all about my iPad, but ultimately I realized like I've recorded twice and both times were just wrong. They were, they had issues either with like the framing because I was trying to shoot on my phone so I couldn't see it and like half my head was cut off. It was like this or they had issues where like I recorded in 60 frames per second, but it was slow-mo mode. So there was nothing actually recorded, which was great, fun, dandy. So um, I'm gonna try to do this more like actual vlog style because at first I was just kind of sitting there at the table, like talking, but we're gonna go out have some fun and I'm gonna chit chat about the iPad. I probably won't have, I won't have the iPad with me. So there's that fun part, but let's go do it. I decided to go out in the dark today. I forgot time change was a thing. I forgot that it's still dark out at like seven o'clock in the morning. So fun fact, I usually record all these super early in the morning. Um, so this is fun and great. Um, like I said, I wanted to do something about the iPad. So like recently I switched to an iPad Pro work style. So like an M1 iPad Pro, that's basically been running my life besides any kind of like development type things. Anything that's really like requires a computer so like some youtube video stuff actually happens on the computer but actually anything like vloggy type like this is happening on that m1 editing wise posting wise stuff like that we probably are just gonna go to the starbucks because i don't know any other coffee shop that's open that quite early so let's go hi can i get a um grande blonde americano please hot no, thank you. Uh, no, that'll be it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so I came to a parking garage at the mall, got the Starbucks. Um, let me, I'm gonna grab my foot camera real quick, but. Um, so, uh, all right, so this is about to, supposed to be about the iPad. There's not gonna be any iPad whatsoever inside this, um, inside this video because I just don't, I don't have it with me. A month this should go, I went to the Apple store and I said, hey, and I don't want my MacBooks anymore. I want to get the iPad Pro M1 and then we also got the wife a new computer, but I wanted to get the iPad Pro M1. We traded in, I came out with a one terabyte M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. I already had an Apple Pencil from a previous iPad. Um, we're gonna go ahead and snap a photo here. So like I walked I walked into that, walked out with it, and then decided, hey, like this is what I want. I want to try to make the iPad work as much as possible for myself. A, I just thought it would make a really good device for me. Um, I've wanted the M1 iPad Pro for a while, and it's it's time. It was time for me to trade it in and try it out and see if I could make it be most of my device. So what do I use it for exactly? Well, a lot of YouTube stuff actually. So script planning, content planning, editing even, like this will be edited on the iPad for the most part. Photo editing, a, a little bit, very, very small, tiny amount of web development stuff. Usually that's just like fixing typos and then shipping it, stuff like that. Um, note taking obviously drawing stuff like that as well so that's really what i use the ipad for what do i use to get that done with well i use the apple pencil the magic keyboard and i used to be in the camp that the magic keyboard wasn't going to be worth it so i used to think that the magic keyboard just would not ever be worth the money because that's not a cheap that's not a cheap accessory but I have very quickly like turned around of like, oh no, it's definitely worth the accessory. Like if you can afford it, get it. Having a trackpad permanently attached to your iPad is a game changer. And same with your keyboard. Like I knew the keyboard was good because like I've always had the smart folio, you know, the one that lets you like wrap it around, stuff like that. It doesn't have the trackpad, but it had the keyboard in it. And I always had one of those and it was always super useful, especially when traveling because the keyboard was just attached. Um, and that's the same with the Magic Keyboard. It doesn't charge, it just gets all its power off of the iPad. And another bonus that I didn't realize the Magic Keyboard had until now, until like I was using it or I didn't put together how useful it would be 
was the fact that it also has another power cable. It has another power input. So you have the the USB C slot on the side of the iPad, but you also have a USB power slot on the side of the Magic Keyboard that's opposite. So now I have two different places to charge the iPad, and I can do it from either side, which is great. It's amazing. Um, that also frees up the USB port on the side of the, the USB-C port on the right side of the iPad. So the one that's actually built into the iPad, it frees it up for actual accessories and it's a Thunderbolt accessory. So I have actually hooked it up to my desk just to see what it looks like. Um, and you know, it's kind of neat. I don't think I'm the one that would use it like that because I do have my Mac like there, but it was really neat to do. The one downside I have with the Magic Keyboard is that I can't let the iPad go flat with the screen up. So if I wanted to draw, I have to pop it out of the case and actually draw with it that way. Um, which isn't too terribly of a big deal, but it could be a big deal to some people. And it's just something to be aware of. So what about the um, Apple Pencil? If you're gonna do any kind of drawing or note taking on the, app itself, on the iPad, I just highly recommend the Apple Pencil no matter what. Now, what about now? What about apps-wise? Because like you can't do any and all the stuff that I say I do, you could do with built-in apps. Like you could use iMovie, you could use Notes, Pages, all that kind of stuff to actually get in and out. And Calendar, obviously, for like keeping out content planning. I don't like using those though. So here's a couple apps that I actually use um, for all of it. So I use Craft, Notion, and Airtable for content planning. I'm switching from Notion to Airtable. If you wanna hear more about that, let me know in the comments. So Craft, Notion, Airtable are all used for scripts, notes, video, YouTube planning, content planning, all of that kind of stuff. Video editing, I use LumaFusion, and the Photos app is actually part of that workflow um, in the Files app. Um, but LumaFusion is the go-to video editor if you're trying to get started video editing on the iPad Pro. Um, say, and it works on Android and iOS as well. It's not just for the iPads. Uh, let's see, photo editing is another big one that I do on the iPad. Best screen with that XDR display on the iPad Pro. So um, that is kind of convoluted right now, but it has the I, the workflow includes the Photos app, like that's built in on all the devices, Raw Power, Pixelmator Photo, Pixelmator Pro, and then maybe Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo, depending on what I need to do. Um, and yes, I use all of those apps in my workflow. It's a, it's a little bit of a mess, but it's it's doable. I was finding even on the Mac though, whenever I was using the Mac as my, my main workflow device, I was still using like um, Photos, Raw Power, Affinity Photo, and still Pixelmator. So like it's still the same apps, it's just a different type of workflow on a better screen. I mean that's basically all I really use it for. Oh, I mean casual web surfing if you want to know. I do a lot of um, Reddit and Twittering, Redditing and Twittering on my iPad and that is mainly using Apollo and Tweet Tweetbot or Twitter or the actual first party Twitter app. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling for the day. Um, for, so for app design, website design, app development, stuff like that, uh, to sketch things out, I like to use a app called uh, Concepts. It's just, it's, it's one of those drawing apps, it's a vector drawing app, so you don't ever get like pixelated, uh, pixelated lines, stuff like that. Um, it has a lot of like templates built in. It is actually free to download. There is no, and there is a subscription, but I'm still on the, I'm on the free plan. I haven't hit any limits, so it could actually work out pretty well. Um, and then also I use an app called Adaptivity and it basically just gives you on the iPad, it gives you all the dimensions that you would need for like split screen and stuff like that, um, which is super, super duper fun, super duper nice. And then finally, the last app that I actually, the last apps that I wanna talk about just for fun that I use on my iPad all the time are Procreate for drawing, and then also Slack is installed because work communication and there's some cool Slack groups and Discord. Discord is also installed, so if you have, so that I can hop in and talk in all the communities as soon as possible. Join the Discord, be part of the community. We'd love to have you there. We'd love if you wanted to come and talk about this kind of stuff with us. Now, the ne last thing about my iPad that I really want to talk about is if I really think it could replace my computer, and I think I've talked about this, and the answer is no, it can't. 
Um, app development can't happen. I still need it sometimes for video for video editing. There's just a lot of stuff that it's that the workflows are just too clunky or it just straight up doesn't do that I just can't give up. So web development, app development, um, it's a lot easier to get designs out. It's a lot easier to get YouTube videos out from the Mac. Uh, web extensions are coming along in iPad OS 15, but there are still some web extensions that I can't live without that are inside Chrome, Firefox, all those fun stuff um, that just make my life easier. So, like I said, I don't think it's completely doable for me for anyone to switch over to the iPad lifestyle completely unless, I mean, I guess you could actually if you don't have a job, if you don't have like hobbies that require more power and you don't have, a, I shouldn't say more power because my computers are all ran from the M1 and have the exact same, my Mac mini has the exact same RAM, the exact same chipset that my, um, that my iPad Pro does. So like, I can't say more power. It's literally just the software difference and the fact that I can't run Mac OS on my iPad. So with that being said though, that's really all I have about my iPad. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, heart, thumbs up, subscribe, do all the things you're supposed to do um, to let me know that this was good. If it wasn't good, let me know in the comments. If you wanna hear more, let me know in the comments below like what you liked about it, what you didn't like, what you want to hear more of, what you don't want to hear more of, all that fun stuff. I'm always down for feedback. Join the Discord. We'd be super happy to have you inside the community with us. And if you liked this video, the algorithm has determined that you'd probably like the next video right up here. So make sure you go watch it if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.